Rachel Marie Skemp was born on October 13th, 1982, to Jeff and Amy Skemp in Melrose Park, Illinois. When Rachel was around three years old, her parents divorced and her mother, Amy, later went on to marry a man named Vincent Vince Mellon. Amy and Vince had two children together, a son, Jason, born in 1988, and a daughter, Ashley, born in 1990, Rachel being overjoyed at having two half-siblings. The family resided at an address on Melissa Drive in Bolingbrook, located around 30 miles or so away from Chicago. By 1996, Rachel was a smiley, bright and funny 7th grader at Ward Middle School, situated in her hometown of Bolingbrook. She excelled at reading and writing, and when taking on various babysitting jobs, Rachel would even quiz the children on these subjects. She was also very talented at science, and voiced her intent to one day become a teacher. She was an honour student at said middle school and even followed in the footsteps of her parents and became a youth leader at the First Baptist Church. Aside from academics, Rachel loved singing and dancing and even grew to be passionate about the environment and recycling. She loved her family and friends and always wanted to make them happy in whatever way possible. Those who knew her best described Rachel as someone who would light up every room she entered. As Rachel got older, however, things took a dark turn at home. According to a blog post on Medium.com, her mother and stepfather got into a physical altercation in 1990 at the family home, which resulted in her mother, Amy, filing a restraining order against Vince for striking her, pushing her down some stairs and threatening Rachel. The restraining order was eventually dropped and Amy and Vince rekindled their relationship. In the spring of 1995, Rachel ran away from home for the duration of about 12 hours, allegedly after fearing she would be blamed for breaking something that her siblings actually broke. Rachel slept outside one of her friend's houses before going to her step-grandparents, who subsequently took her back home. In the summer of 1995, Rachel visited her father Jeff in Dallas, Texas for around a month or so before returning to Illinois. Prior to her departure home, Rachel told her uncle that she wanted to stay with Jeff and live in Dallas. The last time Jeff heard from his daughter was on Christmas Day 1995. The day prior to her disappearance, January the 30th, Rachel was seen crying by her locker at school, something which was extremely uncharacteristic of the usual smiley and happy teen. She had told family and friends that she had been feeling unwell in the days prior, and concerned, her friends asked Rachel what was wrong. She simply replied that she had a problem, but insisted she would take care of it herself. The following day, Rachel would disappear in very suspicious circumstances. January the 31st, 1996, a day of sub-zero temperatures with a dusting of snow on the ground. That day, Rachel took the day off from school after complaining of a sore throat. Her stepfather, Vince, was also home at the time as he was unemployed. At approximately 10.45am, Rachel called her paternal grandmother to thank her for the gifts she sent for Christmas. According to Lucy, her grandmother, the conversation seemed normal, though Rachel quietened after a few minutes. Lucy asked if Vince was there, to which Rachel confirmed he was, before quickly wrapping up the call and saying that she had to go. What truly happened following this phone call is unclear. However, according to Vince, he and Rachel played video games until Rachel went to take a nap early that afternoon, wrapping herself up with a blue blanket. 
Vince then took the family's white German Shepherd, Duke, for a half-hour walk at around 2.30pm, leaving the front door of the residence unlocked. Interestingly, during the walk, Vince claimed that Duke slipped through his collar and chased after rabbits. Sources differ on what happened next. Some claim Vincent went off to catch his dog before heading home. Others claim he abandoned the dog in the field, believing he would find his own way back, this being a very hard pill for many to swallow. Why would anyone abandon a dog, smart or not, in a field on a cold wintry day and expect them to get home by themselves? It's a detail which many remain sceptical about. How, within 30 minutes, did Vince walk the dog, lose him off the leash and return home? He clearly did not spend much time looking for Duke if his story is to be believed. An estate agent found the dog wandering about later that day and returned him to Vince between 4.30 and 5pm. Vince clearly didn't make any effort to look for his missing dog or his missing stepdaughter. He simply didn't appear to care. According to authorities, Vince didn't seem to notice straight away that his stepdaughter was missing upon his return. At approximately 3.15, Rachel's half-sister, Ashley, who was six at the time, returned home from school and she herself found that Rachel was nowhere to be found. Jason returned from school as well a short time later, but police were not informed of Rachel's strange disappearance until after 5pm that night when Amy returned home from work. Police didn't immediately prioritise the case as Rachel had run away once before and arrived at the address an hour later and again the following morning. They found Rachel's room in order, other than the fact her pillow and blue blanket she had the previous day were missing. Also of note, what is odd is the fact that Rachel's winter clothes were left at home during an extremely cold bout, going into the minus 20s. Her Walkman music player and her purse were also left at home. If she had left the home of her free will, she wouldn't have lasted long in those temperatures. Initially, some believe that Rachel had perhaps gone back to Dallas to live with her biological father, Jeff, but this proved not to be the case. There was no evidence Rachel got any tickets to visit anyone and her bank account has remained untouched since she disappeared. Police arrived at the residence and found no evidence of forced entry. Authorities used all the tools at their disposal to help locate Rachel, including air search operatives and specialist diving teams, but their efforts turned up no trace of the missing schoolgirl. When asked about the last time he saw Rachel, Vince simply stated that he saw her asleep in bed and he was convinced that someone had snatched her. Police were sceptical of this due to a number of reasons. Firstly, Vince had some unexplained scratch marks all over his arms and upon being questioned about them, he stated that he got them working on his car. The case then took a sinister turn when authorities discovered a book called Daddy Kisses, a book about father-child bonds and a steak knife under Rachel's bed. Police also found Rachel's diary and it made for some difficult reading. One journal entry, dated August 7th, 1995, Rachel wrote that her stepfather Vincent had kissed her and touched her inappropriately, while supposedly warning Rachel about the dangers of predators. This, and the steak knife under her bed, suggests that Rachel was likely fearful of her stepfather. He already had domestic violence charges to his name, and in the years following Rachel's disappearance, further charges were laid, including domestic battery of a minor in 2003 and drink driving in 2017. With suspicions growing regarding Mellon's involvement in Rachel's disappearance, police questioned Vince extensively. Something to note here is that, apart from the domestic violence charges laid against him by Rachel's mother, Vince also failed a number of polygraph tests in regards to his stepdaughter's disappearance. Of course, lie detectors aren't admissible in court as evidence, as their accuracy is strongly disputed by many in law enforcement. Vince was notably uncooperative with authorities and executed his right to silence. 
Amy, on the other hand, was highly cooperative with police in regards to her daughter's disappearance. Rachel's biological father, Jeff, flew from Texas to Illinois as soon as possible to help aid in the search for his daughter. Police scoured the Mellon home from top to bottom and didn't find anything significant such as blood spatters or any signs of a struggle. There was simply no evidence indicating what fate befell 13-year-old Rachel. According to one source, however, investigators were seen leaving the property with a black duffel bag, though whether the contents were of interest or not remains unclear. Despite the evidence mounting against Vince Mellon, there was simply not enough physical evidence to suggest he had any involvement in Rachel's disappearance. Amy Mellon did, however, sue the city sometime later after she felt that investigators snuck around her home and stole photographs of Rachel without permission. She was angry that the police weren't doing more to find her missing daughter, and to add insult to injury, Amy was told an episode of America's Most Wanted were looking to feature Rachel on one of their shows, but for some reason, the Bolingbrook police decided not to go ahead with producing the segment, for reasons unknown. After the case was reopened in 2000, authorities were granted permission to take blood, saliva, hair and semen samples from Vincent to be put in front of a grand jury. However, what became of any analysis or forensic testing remains publicly unknown. Unfortunately, the grand jury investigation, which lasted around two months, ceased and no charges were laid, the only conclusions being that homicide was likely. As a matter of fact, nobody has ever been charged in regards to this case, though it should be noted that one of the jurors, Drew Peterson, shockingly turned out to be a murderer himself, killing at least one of his wives. His fourth wife, Stacy Peterson, remains a missing person. He also lived in Bolingbrook, Illinois, though his crimes took place in the mid-2000s. Nothing ties Peterson to this particular case. According to Amy Mellon, she received three phone calls within three minutes sometime in 2001 and claimed it was Rachel, though there is no evidence to prove these incidents occurred. Amy and Vincent moved to Tennessee a short time after their daughter vanished, allegedly cutting all ties with Bolingbrook PD after suspicions about Vince's involvement grew. Meanwhile, Rachel's biological father, Jeff, moved to Illinois in order to be closer to where his daughter disappeared, hoping that by being closer he could help in some way. He never changed his phone number either, holding on to the hope that someday his lost daughter would call. Tragically, she never did. At the time of her disappearance in January of 1996, Rachel Mellon Skemp was 13 years old. She is described as being of Asian origins, specifically Filipino, standing at 5 feet tall and weighing between 62 and 80 pounds. She has black hair and hazel eyes, has a mole on the upper left side of her lip and has both ears pierced. Her hair was cut short at the time of her vanishing, though she commonly had it shoulder length. She may solely use the surname Melon or Skimp. When she was last seen alive, Rachel was wearing a pink sweater, a pair of yellow sweatpants and a pair of red house slippers. The two pillows and blue blankets she was using when going for her nap have also never been found. In May of 2002, a memorial tree was planted in Whipfler Park, across from the house Rachel lived in, with a memorial plaque underneath. Those who adored her the most have never forgotten her and cherished the times they spent with her. An updated facial reconstruction was released in early 2021 by the NCMEC, depicting how Rachel would look aged 38. Bolingbrook police claimed that they are still actively investigating this case, with new investigators taking a fresh look at the case, though unfortunately there have been no significant leads in recent years. The only lead came in 2016, when a private detective hired by Rachel's family appealed for an old classmate and friend of Rachel's called Autumn to come forward. The PI believes that Autumn may hold some information which may help in solving this case. Whether Autumn has been traced and contacted is unknown. 
There is currently a $10,000 reward for anyone who can give the police any information which leads to the arrest and conviction of Rachel's abductor and or killer. All Rachel's remaining loved ones want is answers and for justice to be served. Shortly after her vanishing, Jeff Skemp sat in Rachel's empty bedroom, placed his daughter's headphones over his ears and listened to the Jagged Little Pill record by Alanis Morissette on her Walkman, specifically his daughter's favourite song, Hand in My Pocket. Rachel had told her father during their final phone call that she was really into Morissette's music, no longer the pop she listened to as a child. Jeff took the CD from Rachel's Walkman and still holds it dear, listening to Hand In My Pocket, which continues to remind him of his smiley, happy and loving daughter.